Uri and the Blind Forest is such an amazing game. There is so many things that made it a good one. Besides the amazing art and the lovely music, the mechanics of the game are so responsive and well made. The game has a lot of interesting abilities and gameplay mechanics, and today we're gonna choose one of them to learn how to remake it in Unity. Of course there is a lot of abilities and so many good mechanics and ideas which we're gonna cover in later videos, but today we're gonna learn how to make Bash ability. A Bash ability is basically allow you to use an object like enemy or projectile to dash to a certain point and the used object goes to the opposite way. So let's break down how this ability works. The first thing you might notice is the time has been frozen when the player is choosing his bash direction. The second thing is that we use an arrow to set the bash direction. And when we perform the bash, our player is teleporting to the center of the bashable object then he makes a dash to the wanted direction. And the object goes the opposite direction. Let's start with our basic map here. We have this player, which has Sprite Render, Box Collider 2D, and Rigid Body 2D. Basic stuffs. And I have added another script. All what it does is just when, when hit one of those, he dies. Rather than that, we don't have anything yet. No jumping, no movement, no dashing, no bashing, nothing. So let's make those mechanics right here. So, I'm gonna start by adding a new C Sharp script for the player movement. So, let's edit and open it up with Visual Studio. And let's start by declaring some variables. First, I'm gonna declare the first variable of the movement speed and another variable for the player rigid body. And I'm gonna add another variable for the direction. And in start method, I'm gonna identify the player rigid body by adding its component rigid body. In update method, I'm gonna set the direction equal to input .get axis horizontal multiple by movement speed. And inside the fixed update function, we're gonna perform the actual movement of the player by setting the x axis of the player rigid body velocity to direction multiple by time dot fixed delta sign and we're gonna leave the y-axis as it is because we want to move only in the x-axis so let's save this and go back to unity and by adding the movement script to the player you can see that there is two variables movement speed and the player rigid body the player rigid body will be automatically identified in the start function so let's add a value to the movement speed and see if that's working and as you can see here, the basic movement is working just fine. But we have a small problem, which is our player doesn't look to his movement direction. So let's fix this quickly. In order to make the player look to where he's heading, I will create an if statement about the x direction. If the direction greater than zero, that means the player is moving right. Otherwise, he is moving left. And here we go. Our player movement is working just fine. Let's remove the serialize field from the rigid body because we don't need him in the inspector. And let's add a new variable for the jump power. Then I'm gonna create a new function for the jumping. If we get an input from the space key, we will add a force to the player rigid body. By adding player rb add force transform up multiple by jump power. So let's call the jump function in the update method and let's go back to unity. I will add a random value to the jump power and let's see if that's working. And as you can see, our snappy jumping is working just fine. But we have a problem that if we keep pressing the space key, he will be jumping forever. So in order to fix this, we need to check if the player is grounded. And to check if the player is grounded, we need some variables. First, we need a variable called layer mask and a second variable called collider 2D. And I'm gonna identify the collider 2D in the start method and of course it's gonna be the box collider of the player. And then I will create a function that returns a boolean. Of course the boolean will be true if the player is on the ground. And to check if the player is grounded or not, we will create a box cast. The origin of the box cast will be the center of the player's box collider. And its size will be the half size of the same collider. The direction will be down so we will set vector 2 to down. 
and I'm gonna add an extra height in order to make the jump more responsive. And finally a layer mask so the boxcast will consider the platform layer as the ground. Then I will set return if the collider of the raycast is not null. And if you didn't understand very well what does the boxcast mean or you didn't get how to check if the player is grounded, don't worry, there is a lot of upcoming videos that will break down all of these things. So let's call the isGrounded function as an additional condition inside the if statement. So we can check if the player is grounded or not before doing our jump. Back in Unity we need to add a new layer, I'm gonna name it platform. Then we will select the platform element and change its layer to the platform layer which we've just created it. From the movement script in the player, we need to set what the layer that we should consider as the ground. And of course, it's the platform layer. And here we go, our player jumping is working just fine. Before we start coding our bash mechanic, we need to set up some elements first. And let's start with the arrow. I will use this arrow here and make a script for his rotation, so the player can choose his direction perfectly. I will delete the start function cause we don't need it here. And inside the update function, I will declare a vector tree for the direction. And to get the direction of the mouse position, we need to set input.mouse position minus camera.main towards screen point transform.position. The angle of the rotation will be matf.atan2 and it will take direction.x and direction.y to return the arc tangent of the two axes. And it will be multiplied by rad 2 tag function so we can get a degree number. And finally, we will rotate the arrow by this angle using quaternion.angle axis. So let's save this and go back to Unity. We will add the script to the arrow's object and see if that's working. And that's it, our arrow is ready to go. The last thing we need to do before start coding is that we will set up the objects that we want to use to make the bash move. I will use this circle here. First thing we will do is to add a new tag called bashable. And then we will change this circle tag to this new tag which we have created. So we can know that we can use these objects in order to make the bash move. Then we will add a component called Sprint John 2 d to this object, and it will automatically add a rigid body 2D. And by setting these values, we are ready to start making our bash script. So I will start by declaring several variables that we're gonna use in this function. The first variable is the radius of the circle cast. The second variable is the bashable object, and it's for the using object for the bash movement. And I will declare three booleans. The first one is for telling us whether the player is near to a bashable object or not. The second boolean will be true if the player is choosing his direction to make the bash movement. And the last boolean is for whether the player is bashing or not. And I declare a variable for the bash power and other variable for the bash time, which is gonna be the time of the bashing movement. And I declare a game object variable for the arrow. And we need a vector tree to get the want direction for the bash. And finally, I will use another float to resist the bash time when the bash is over. And in the start function, I'm gonna set the bash time reset equal to the bash time. And now we are ready to make our bash function. First, I'm gonna create an array of raycast head 2D. And I'm gonna fill this array by using circle cast all. And circle cast all is just a function that returns the information of the objects in this circle. The origin of the circle will be transformed to position, and I'm gonna set the radius that we have declared before. And just to show you what the circle cast is, I'm gonna draw it in the onDrawGizmos function. And if I change the radius from the inspector, you can see the circle very clear. In order to check if the circle cast did hit a bashable object, I'm gonna create a for each loop for each ray in rays array list. And if a collider tag of the ray cast equal to bashable, then the near to bashable object boolean will be true, and we will set the bashable object to this object that we have found, and then we will break the for each loop. And if near to bashable object boolean is true, I will change the color of this bashable object. And if we press the right mouse button while the player near to some bashable object, then we will set the time to time scale equal to zero so we can stop the time. And then I'm gonna change the scale of the bashable object just to add some nice effects. Then we will show the arrow and set its position to bashable position. And we're gonna set its choosing direction boolean to true. If input.getKUp and is choosing direction true, 
we will return the time scale to its normal value and we will return the bashable to its normal scale as well and we will set is bashing boolean to true then we're gonna reset the velocity of the rigid body and we need to set the transformed position equal to the bashable position after that we need to set the direction before start bashing and we will use it to set the rotation of the player we will add a force to the rigid body of the bashable object as a reaction to the bash power and we will disable the arrow because choosing direction is over finally we need to reset the color for the bashable object to its normal color and now we can do our bashing movement by checking if his bashing boolean is true and the bash time greater than zero we will set bash time minus equal time dot delta time and we will set the velocity to bash dire multiple by bash power and don't forget the time dot delta time and if the bash time is over we will reset it by bash time reset and set its bashing boolean to false and reset the velocity of the rigid body to its normal condition and we must set near to bashable object boolean to false in the beginning of the for each loop otherwise it will be true after the bash is over we need also to make an if statement about whether the player is dashing or not before the movement script in the fixed update function because we don't want any movement from the arrow keys to be applied when the player is dashing and by calling the bash function in the update method our script is completed and we can go back to unity in unity we need to set the circle collider of the bashable object as a trigger collider because we don't want our player to stuck in the used object and in the movement script of the player we will identify the arrow game object and tweak some values in the script and now we can test our bashing movement and here we go guys our bashing movement is working just as we wanted of course there is a lot of improvement that can be added to this script but at least we did the core mechanic of this ability from Ori and the Blind Forest. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and if you liked my content please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for other upcoming videos about game development. See you.